Travis Scott's game-changing album Rodeo turns 8 this month. When I originally reviewed it, I gave it an 8, and I revisited the record today to see if I'm still vibing with it. Great intro with that spoken word bit from T.I. that I think actually says a lot about the way Travis uh, would eventually imagine his brand and his popularity growing, talking about how he's like, you know, leading this and inspiring that and so on and so forth. I mean, I I don't think it really adds up to a whole lot philosophically, but, uh, you know, you can't deny that, like, Travis has kind of manifested this. Oh, my God, the first part of this track. I'm floating. It's so psychedelic. It's so deep. It's so rich it's insane the sounds on this and i love uh the smooth transition into you know the r&b uh this side part of the track i just miss when travis's songs just uh, felt a bit more like journeys in themselves stellar future feature and one of the best and hugest choruses on any travis scott song ever Uh, i wish his hooks hit this hard today i mean you know utopia has a lot of good tracks on it but 3,500 is just on another level, I swear. Again, love the multiple phases on this track. It's it's like we're kind of uh, going through, again, a journey. And as it's moving along, it's getting more intense uh, to the point where we hit this, like, you know, really crazy lo-fi Southern Trap beat with Juicy J rapping on it. Beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful appearance from Casey Hill. And, uh, you know, loving that kind of glamorous boom bap vibe uh, that's coming through in the last leg of the song, too. Again, fantastic. Uh, No notes. I will say this, though. I still think Abel's vocals on this track got overcooked. Just overcooked. Plus, that Pringles box line is awful. Uh, Maybe the worst line on this entire record. I also think Nightcrawler, even with it having, uh, you know, a really good Sway Lee feature and Chief Keef uh, sounding sick on it as well, uh, really could have used an intro of some sort. It kind of goes in... Uh, raw without much of, you know, a ceremony to kind of set things up. But still, this track with Kanye, Pee on Your Grave, goes hard. There was a part of me when I first heard this record that wasn't too crazy about how unhinged the track is, if I remember correctly. But uh, no, I I think that element of the uh, song has uh, really uh, made it fun, made it really fun as the years have drawn on. No, no need to revisit with this one. This track is still in regular rotation for me. One of the best choruses on any Travis track, honestly. I'm floating. I'm floating on this one. I'm floating. Maria I'm Drunk has to be like top five young thug chorus features ever, if not top three. The combination of Southern hip hop and like indie aesthetics on the Tori Moi track are insane and I'm, I'm sort of sad that we're, we're not, like, getting more of this. How, how have we not gotten more of this? This is one of the few moments in Travis's catalog that I would say where he's, like, genuinely being, I, I don't know, kind of, kind of epic and life-affirming, inspiring in a way. And I really like how he kind of ties up, you know, the, the introduction to himself, his aspirations, and the life he led up until this point on, on Apple Pie. I think this is a really, you know, good, classy finish. Uh, for the record. And I love that he didn't really kind of overdo the track list either on this album. It's a relatively tight track list. So yeah, all in all, I think this record has aged wonderfully. And I probably enjoy it uh, more now than I did when I originally reviewed it.